to make me happier than to leave this hall having been enlightened by your wisdom, by your experience, by your knowledge. famous personality on TV over here, a local famous personality from Channel 13, Medcom. From Channel 13, a local TV personality, very famous, very well known, and he wanted your blessings and he wanted to interact with you. So he's going to do the reading of the questions today. It's a pleasure. I'll be blessed. He's Mr. Alex Mr. Alex Mr. Alex Alex. Mr. Alex. Brother Alex. I'm so happy to be here. I'm more than happy. It's a pleasure and a blessing to be here. I'm going to ask some questions that are, or people here are eager to ask you. So I'm going to read them slowly. Perfect. We're going to begin. Dear Dada, Master, what is the cause of suffering in the majority of humanity? The cause of suffering. In the case of majority of the people, is this that we have not lived in the right way. There is what we call the law of karma. The law of karma states what you sow, that you shall reap. Every word that I utter, every action that I perform, every thought that I think, every feeling, every emotion that is evoked within me is a seed which falls in the field of life which every one of us carries. Every one of us, you may be the poorest of the poor, yet you have this field of life. And this field of life registers the seed. Whatever you do in the form of a seed. You may get up in the middle of the night. You say, nobody sees me. You do a wrong thing. It is true, nobody saw you. But what you did took the form of a seed and dropped into the field of your life. Now that seed may not fructify immediately. It will grow into a sapling after say five months or ten months. And you begin to say, I have not done anything wrong. Why is it that this thing has happened to me? It is that seed which has now fructified and has grown into a tree and has yielded fruit. That fruit may be bitter, it may be sweet, it may be insipid, but you will have to eat it, nobody else will eat it for you. If you bear in mind this one law, the law of karma, which is the law of the sea, I think many of your problems will be solved. So many things are happening to us. We are not able to understand why. Why did this thing happen to me? Why? Because something you have done a hundred years ago, something you have done five hundred years ago has borne fruit now and this fruit you have to eat. Okay, we have another question. Dear Dada, how can we help eradicate violence in the young generation when parents doesn't support their own kids? To eradicate violence when the parents does not support their own kids. How can we eradicate violence when parents do not support their own kids, their own children? What has violence to do with parents supporting their kids? It, well, the relation I think they do is that the comparison of violence when the parents have done nothing to help their kids go forward or get away from that. How, how can you separate the violence and but the... the violence is not being done by kids only. No, no, we, no. We live in an age of violence. Yes. This age is an age of violence. There is terrorism. 
They are not kids who come as terrorists now. They, so what has uh, kids to do with uh, terrorist violence? I think their, their question is about how can we eradicate or take the kids away from what's going on in the world, from the violence, what's the teachings that the, the parents have to do? The kids will be taken away from what is happening in the world around you. By the example that you said before then, they will not listen to your words. There was a little boy, he came and told me, my father tells me speak the truth, but he does not speak the truth. How can I speak the truth? It is, example, it is example that affects. It is life that affects life, not words. Yeah. We have another question, beloved Dada. How to help eradicate bad negative karma more easily? How to get away from the bad karma? By doing good karma. <laughs> you start doing good karma, and you'll be able to eradicate the bad karma that you have done in the past. We have another question. How to know if the person I'm living with is karmic or not? If? If the person I'm living with is karmic or not? If the person has good karma or not, the person that is living with me? You can, you can easily find from the karma that he's doing. If he's doing good karma, he is karmic. If he's doing bad karma, then he's not karmic. It's that easy. Muy fácil saber. Dear Dada, how can I deal with someone who mistreat me, but that I have to work with on different projects? Sometimes I feel like putting the guilt on me, but I think that I will be running away if I quit my job. Thank you. If someone is mistreating you, it's not treating you right at work, but you have to work with them in many projects. How do you get along and continue before quitting? But I think your teacher is teaching you how to accommodate yourself to new circumstances. Therefore, he is not treating you in the right way. He will teach you patience. He will teach you how to control your anger. We, we have come here to this earth plane to learn some lessons that we need to learn. Supposing I am short of temper, how will I learn to control my temper? I should have somebody who should irritate me, then only I will learn to control temper. But that is the reason, yes. Beloved Dara, martial arts or practicing yoga helps in self renunciation Renunciation? Yes. Martial arts? Practicing yoga. Or yoga? Or martial arts help in God realization or self realization. And the yoga that is being followed now is what we call Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga has to do only with the exercises of the body. They, they don't go beyond the body, but we are not the bodies. Yeah. We are souls. We are immortal souls. You need to do, you need to do soul yoga. Therefore, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if that yoga could be combined with soul yoga, it will lead us to God. Yeah. Yes. We have For instance, this yoga teaches us concentration, teaches us a little of meditation, all these things could be used to draw closer to, it, to the Lord. Okay. We have another question from a 13-year-old kid. Why and how should we meditate? Don't meditate if you don't feel the need to do so. If somebody compelling you to meditate. But meditation has many advantages. Meditation if you are a 13, he said it is a 13 year old kid who has, who has put this question. If you meditate, you will not need to do plenty of homework. <laughs> what you listen in the classroom, you will not need to revise. What you hear once will stick to you. There are many advantages of meditation. But if you don't feel like meditating, don't meditate. Yeah. yeah. We have another question. Dearest Dayai, you are an inspiration to all us. 
with your smile and humbleness. Thank you for that. My question is, eating non-vegetables is not good as we kill animals. What about leather belts, leather seats in our posh cars, leather bag, uh, bags, and shoes? Just using all those also are sins? Huh? Sins. Are those sins, sins if we use all leather products from animals uh, they if may, they are killed? They may not be sins, but they are against the quality of compassion. For instance, uh, my shoe, whenever I get a shoe, I feel sure that it does not contain any leather. But uh, they are not sins. They are not sins. They are sins. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> Beloved Tara, which is the easiest way to overcome a deep sorrow of losing a very loving family member? How do we overcome losing a family member? The sorrow. How do you uh, deal when a family member dies? Mm -hmm. That's what we mean. When a family member is born, what do you do? You feel happy, isn't it? If you feel happy when a family member comes to you, you should take him to be a gift of God to you. This gift has been sent by God to you. He belongs to God. He doesn't belong to you. It is because you think he belongs to you. It is because you get attached to him that when he dies you become sad, you become sorrowful. But if once you realize that he is a gift of God to you for a certain period, you will not be sorrowful. Supposing somebody were to give you, uh, say, five thousand dollars, and with a request that you will kindly keep this amount with yourself, when I need it, I will take from you. Then he comes after ten years and says, "Now I am in need of money. Give me back those five thousand dollars." Will you tell him, "No, I will not give you," or will you feel sorrowful if you give back those five thousand? So these children, they are not yours. These relatives, they are not yours. They are given by God for a specific period to give you company, to teach you something, and to be taught by you some lessons. Yes. So companions in life. Yes. Dear Dada, how to be close to God in everyday life? How can I do it? Huh? Um, um, is the gentleman who has put this question completely dead? <laughs> because that is what I was speaking about. <laughs> I will I offer practical suggestions. Yes. Ten practical suggestions. Yeah. It, was, it was written before your teaching, that's why. We have another question. If I feel immense love for God, how can I serve the Lord? If I have the, the feeling of God inside me, how can I serve Him? You can serve Him by serving those that are in need. Because everyone is an image of God. Everyone is a picture of God. You are all gods, only you don't know it. But you are God. A stage will come in your life. Maybe not in this world, maybe in a later world, then you will realize that you are God. This is what we call God realization. The purpose of human birth is God realization. When you realize God, then you know that you are God. Because there is nothing besides God in this universe. This whole universe is God thing. There is a small Upanishad uh, scripture of India, the opening line of which is Ishavasyam Idam Sarva. Everything that you see is a vesture of God. We all are very uh, 
what do you call mask? We all have it. This is a mask. I am a god, really. So I, I, I don't claim that no. But in reality, I am god. But this mask I have uh, worn, which hides the god in me. Now, once I penetrate through the mask, I will see how ah, I am god. We have another question, beloved Dada. How do I know if I am a healer soul? What are the signs? Try to heal yourself first. If you can heal yourself, you are a healer. We have one more. Why only the Hindus we consider killing animals a sin? And we will face karma. But in other religions, like Muslim, Christians, they do not consider killing animals a sin. Do they face the same karma? They have, because uh, there is uh, a, a ignoratia, ladies, non excuse We were taught in Jewish students, uh, ignoratia, legis, non excuse Ignorance of law is no excuse. No excuse. So the here too, ignorance of law is no excuse. Okay. Yes. I don't know if you have more questions in the head, my body opens. I can ask. Dada, why do good people suffer? Because they are not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> when they ask Jesus, they say to him, you are perfect, he said, even Jesus said, call me not perfect, alone the Father in heaven is perfect. So we are not good enough. And the person who feels that he is good is perhaps the worst of all. <laughs> I have a question. How do we get rid of ego, the bad ego that is making you, us you strong? Cannot, you cannot annihilate the ego. No. That is why there is a need of a guru. If you can get the right type of guru. Today, there are so many gurus going about the streets. Be very careful. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get caught in the, way, in the snare of it. Uh, if you can get a good guru, a guru of the right type, he will be able to kill your ego and you will live a wonderful life. Okay. Yes. We have more questions here, Dada. When I was younger, I had a dream with God that changed my life. Why did I feel so strange after this? Why did I? Feel so strange. Because you didn't get the dream again. That's <laughs> incomplete. This is a difficult question. Where did God born? Or where did he come up from? The, uh, the father of God is super God. <laughs> and the father of super God is super, super God. <laughs> And the father of super, super God is super, super, super. Hay un pensador que tiene una pregunta que quiere hacer a Dada, pero este es el momento perfecto para hacerlo. Hay alguien atrás, dos pueden venir. Oh, le damos su libro. Buenas noches. Eh, para que le, le, le pregunte qué opina acerca del Papa Francisco. He's asking, what do you think about Pope Francis, the new Pope we have in the Christians? I have not studied him. I am not qualified. Has anyone be studied Francis? The few statements that I have uh, read, which he has made. They are wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. But I, I, I came in contact with the earlier Pope. Really? He was a wonderful man. Yes, yes. We have another question. Yeah. Dear Dada, thank you for coming. Uh, I, I send my blessing. Thanks for coming to Panama. It's actually the second time I had the uh, great opportunity to see to see you, and as soon as we came to that door, 
I will feel you nice and I feel so blessed to be here tonight. So thanks for coming. And my question to you It's the is, second time she's been um, here with you and she's very blessed. Since your presence here, she's very blessed. And the question is that really um, my question to you is like how can I do to keep forgiving people that just keep doing damage to my soul? It's like you can how can she forgive people that continue to do damage to her soul? Even if I always...